What's going on, everyone? Welcome to this week's Workout Wednesday Challenge for Power BI. We are in week 43 of 2022. My name is Jeremy Anderson, and I have the pleasure this week of hosting the challenge. We are going to be focusing on incorporating conditional formatting into our report. So perhaps you are familiar with conditional formatting uh, as it applies to, say, the, the table or the matrix visual. And that's great, but we can certainly go above and beyond that in Power BI with applying uh, color formatting to uh, items such as a, a background color um, and, and as well as the color of our um, columns in our bar charts. So here's just a quick look at the, um, the final product that we're going for. Uh, we want to see blue if current year sales are up compared to last year, and we want to see orange if current year sales are down compared to last year. And we also want it to dynamically change so that as you select different items in your filters or as you click on different elements in your visual, uh, those, those colors change as well. So here's what we're going for. Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we will get data and we will be using our sample Superstore data set. I'm going to use the online data.world connector. Continue. And for that owner field, uh, basically here's the link to the data set. It's going to be this nerdy with data. And then the data set ID, that will be our sample dash superstore. All right, now we just want to bring in the orders table, so I'll go ahead and load that in. All right, excellent. Uh, now, this is an optional step here, but it's certainly a good practice, which is creating a dedicated calendar table. So under the data view, I'm just going to go ahead and add that um, by clicking on new table, and then I have a lot of my... Um, a lot of my DAX um, already pre-created, so I'll just go ahead and uh, paste those items in as we go and explain along the way. So this is going to be the code for our uh, the start of our dedicated calendar table. We are creating a contiguous calendar table so that it starts at the, the first day of the year from when we have orders, uh, and then it's going to end on the last day of the year based on when we have orders. Um, according to that order date in our uh, our uh, order table. We'll hit that check mark, and the only thing I want to change here is just updating this date type to date and quickly adjust the format to short date. All right, now I'm just going to add in a few more columns here. Um, so we've got year. Next, I want to add in month name. Then I want to add in a flag for current year. So this is going to flag uh, each row of the calendar table. So each row is a day, uh, a date. Uh, it's going to flag um, each row as true or false based on whether or not it is uh, within the current year. Next, I'm going to create a prior year flag. That looks good. So very similar, true, false for prior year flag. And then finally, I'm going to create a month number column. And this is just going to return the month number. All right, perfect. So now we've got our dedicated calendar table. Let's go ahead and hook that up to our orders table based on date. So we've got a one-to-many relationship uh, that looks good. Uh, the date from our calendar table um, connected to our orders table based on order date. One other thing I want to do quickly just in terms of some setup here is create a dedicated measures table that will help us organize our measures as we go. Uh, so that'll be enter data. And we can call this measures table 
hit load. Perfect. Now we've got uh, basically a measures table here. We can place our measures there as we go. And with that, we can start creating our measures. All right, now, first measure I'm gonna create is just a blank measure. This is just gonna be a essentially a, a helper measure that we'll, uh, we'll use for a title down the road in one of our KPIs. Um, it's just basically a blank surrounded by two quotation marks, so that looks good. And I'll go ahead and move this to our measures table. And then we can also delete this um, automatic uh, column one that was auto-generated. All right, next we will create a total sales measure. This is just gonna be uh, sum of sales. That looks good. Next, we'll have a measure for current year sales. So this is just calculating that sum of sales where the current year is true. That looks good. Next, we will create a total sales prior year measure. Very similar, so we're just calculating the sum of sales where the prior year is true. That looks good. Next, we're gonna create a total sales year over year, and this is just gonna give us the difference in sales between the current and prior year. That looks good. All right, next we want a total sales year over year percent change measure. And this is just giving us the difference in sales between current and prior year. Um, and that's gonna be our percent change. So that looks good. Next, we will create uh, a nice little um, indicator and this is gonna come into play um, for one of our KPI uh, for one of our KPI indicators. So what this is saying is basically if the total sales year over year is greater than zero, uh, we want to return this up arrow. Otherwise, return this down arrow. So how do you get that? I'll go ahead and delete that. And basically, it's, it's really easy. So it's a, a keyboard shortcut. On your keyboard, hit the Windows period. And that's going to bring up um, this box. So again, it was just Windows period shortcut. That brings up this box where you have access to um, emojis, special characters, uh, Unicode characters. So um, under the uh, the symbol section, make sure at the bottom you're on the uh, the arrows, uh, the, the the geometric symbols, and then we want to go ahead and grab that up arrow and the down arrow, and then I'll just quickly format this correctly. So that looks good. So we return that um, that symbol indicator, and we want to return some additional information here. So what we're returning, I'll explain this kind of inside out. We are returning the uh, total sales year over year percent change, but we want the absolute value of that. So what that does is it just removes the the minus sign when we have uh, a negative value, and then we want to format this as a percentage. Um, whole number. So that's what this uh, this does here, this, this formatting. And then finally, we will just end with uh, some year-over-year -year, uh, space and year-over-year -year text. So that's what this, this final piece is here. So that looks good now that we have that. And then last couple of measures will be uh, related to our color formatting. So this measure here is going to uh, define the hex codes used in our conditional formatting. So a couple of variables. We are essentially hard coding our, our colors into a measure. So we've got our blue and we've got our orange and then we, uh, we've got our return statement which says if our total sales year over year is greater than zero, return blue, otherwise we want orange. So that looks good. And then uh, I'm just gonna give one alternative option here when it comes to um, 
some conditional formatting, which is very similar to the last measure we created, but instead of hard coding our, our hex codes in, uh, this will give you some flexibility to set your colors uh, w w within the actual uh, visual formatting. So it's just basically saying if total sales year over year is greater than zero, return a one, otherwise zero. So there we go. We have our measures uh, created in our measures table here. Now we can start uh, we can start building the report. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is actually just set up some shapes here. This is just going to get us organized. It's going to give us some layout. It's going to give us some padding. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that here. I'm going to turn off the fill and the border and add this background black at 20%. And I want a visual border that is uh, has a uh, rounded corners of 10 pixels. So that looks good. And then we will add in our title here. Turn off the background. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change the background of our canvas. I want F2, F2, F2. That looks good. And we'll change the transparency down to zero. There we go. And then we will add in some background for our actual visuals. And this just helps us have some padding when it comes to the, uh, the look and feel. So I'll turn off the fill, turn off the border. Under general, I just want a white background. Looks good. I'll go ahead and just copy and paste this. And we actually want to round the edges, so we'll do that here quickly. Add a visual border, make that white, and round it at 10 pixels. White. Here we go. And quick copy and paste for our final final visual there. Feel free to take some time to uh, to just get the layout just right. Um, that's that's just going to be uh, some icing on the cake stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and lastly add in a report title. Set this to 20, make it bold, turn off the background. There we go. All right. So let's work in this top left section here. What I want to do is add in a title. So I'm going to use the card. And the reason I'm doing this is just because um, I want consistency in terms of the font, um, and I want to have a little bit more control um, over the actual look and feel of this this whole section here, with just some added spacing that I can't really get from the um, from the from the formatting of a of a regular card. So this is where that blank measure comes into play. So we'll we'll add that here. Um, it's going to add a blank right there, so we can remove that by taking off the category label. And oh, lost that guy, but if I go to view, selection, there it is. Add in our title, current year sales. Perfect. Go ahead and bump this up to 16. All right, there we go. And next I will add in um, 
I actually want a multi-row card so that I can get a left alignment. And this is going to be our total sales current year. And quickly format that here. I want currency. Take away the label and take away that accent bar. And then finally, I'm going to bump up the font to 45 and make this DIN. And then last adjustment will just be uh, no decimals. There we go. All right, looking good so far. Let's go ahead and add in that, uh, that little indicator right here. For that, we will use the card. There we go. And this is going to be our total sales year over year indicator. Take away the label. Change the size of the callout value to 16. There we go. Now we need to apply our conditional formatting. So under, under the general section, uh, go to effects and then in background, anywhere you see this FX is where you have um, uh, access or a window into conditional formatting. So under the format style, we'll move this to field value and we'll make this our, uh, our blue orange measure that we created. All right, there we go. Um, now I want to update the look and feel. We'll turn the visual border on and we'll move the, the um, rounded corners actually all the way up to the max to give us that nice, uh, ni nice little pill look. And then I want to uh, change the colors there of that visual border and basically apply the, the same exact uh, formatting that we did to the background. There we go, make sure that's 30. All right, there we go. First section is done there. Now let's go ahead and work out our, um, our actual current year sales by month over here. So you could certainly do something like a stacked column chart, which we'll start with, but then move over to more of a, of a bullet chart look. So for the x-axis, we will have month name. For our y-axis, that will be total sales, current year. And before we get uh, any farther, let's go ahead and add in our colors that we're using. So that blue and that orange, let's just go ahead and add that into the theme so we have access to it. So um, just under view, I'm going to customize the current theme. And I'm just going to change this blue here to our blue that we're using. And then the same thing for the orange. There we go. We need to adjust the month name and we need to sort this by month number. And then here in the visual, we need to sort the access by month name. Ascending, perfect. So there we go. Now, in terms of just applying the um, conditional formatting, we can definitely do that here under um, your, your visual format option. So under visual colors, same, same setup here. So you've got your, your field value. Um, we'll select that measure blue, orange looks good, right? So the alternative that I talked about, let me just explain how to use that. So basically if you didn't want to hard code your, your colors into your measure, um, what you can do if you wanted to have some more flexibility is, um, set the format style to, uh, rules and base that off of that alternative that we created. So we want to say if the value equals one, we want this to be that blue. Otherwise, if the value equals zero, we want it to be that orange. 
and click OK. There we go. So this just gives you some added flexibility in terms of setting your colors within, within this. Uh, visual formatting as opposed to the actual measures. So with that, um, I actually want to have a, a nice little indicator or a, a nice line here. So just so we have some extra context to know where were the prior, prior year sales um, compa compared to the current year. So for that, I'm going to actually create, uh, bring in a custom visual, and I'm going to use a bullet chart. And I was looking for something that was pretty simple and easy to use, which is this bullet chart by OKViz. OK so we'll go ahead and bring that in, add that. All right, good to go there. OK, so then I want to take this visual and move this over to that custom visual and then go ahead and um, update some of the formatting. So. Under targets, let's go ahead and bring in prior year, total sales prior year measure. And then in the formatting, let's move that to vertical. Looks good. Um, category access, I'm gonna bump up the font. Same for values. We'll get rid of the grid lines. Looks good. And then we'll take off the states. Um, so far, so good. Uh, for the colors, let's go ahead and do that. So it's pretty simple, actually, under conditional colors. Um, all we're going to do is set that to orange. Basically, what this is saying is if the value, so if the current year, which is our value, is less than total sales prior year, return orange. We have uh, access to some different um, conditions here, but this is what we want. Um, so that looks that looks good. Um, we also want to just quickly update the color of our target there. Perfect. Okay. And then lastly, I think we just want to update the title here. So we'll call this current year sales versus prior year sales by month. Yeah, maybe current year versus prior year sales by month. I think that works. All right, again, feel free to, to take some time to just get this the formatting just right, but um, that's what we're going for. So for months where we have uh, sales in the current year that are higher than last year, we've got blue. Um, where they're lower compared to prior year, we've got orange, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add our, our last visual, which is going to be um, basically sales by sales by category. So under category, we'll put category. Uh, value will be total sales current year. Target will be that total sales prior year. Perfect. And then just a few um, customization options, which is bumping up the text size. I'll turn off grid lines. Add that conditional color. Set the target color here. Take off states. All right, um, looks good. Uh, what we want to do is make another update to the options and settings. So as you can see here, if I click on December or, or any month here, it's it's actually highlighting um, this other chart and we want it to filter it instead of highlight it. And we can actually control that globally under file options and settings. 
under the options area. For our current file in the report settings section, we're just gonna change, so check this box here, change default visual interaction from cross highlighting to cross filtering and click okay. So now if you click on uh, a bar, it's going to filter instead of highlight, which is what we want. All right, and then lastly, we'll just make a quick update to this title. We'll call this current versus prior year sales by category. Perfect. And we'll just have this match up. We'll call it current versus prior year sales by month. That works. Okay, great. Again, take some time to get your um, formatting just so, uh, make some adjustments. Doesn't have to be perfect here for this first pass through. Um, lastly, just for some, some icing on the cake, let's go ahead and add in a um, legend here at the top along with the filter. So we will add a slicer for region. And region, quick update here. And we want to make this a drop down. Let's go ahead and take away the background. Looks good. Great. And then uh, we will use uh, just some shapes and text box text boxes for our custom legend um, here. Let's see. That looks good for the color. We'll take the border off. That's what we want to do. And I just want to make this 16 by 16. Great. little text box here for up versus prior year. And we'll make this 12. Take off the background. Looks good. And we'll create a couple duplicates here. We'll just copy and paste both of those. And this will be that orange. This will be down first prior year. And then lastly, uh, just a line for prior year. And a line. Let's see, I think we need to take the fill off at a border and we'll make it that same 20% black. There we go. Set this to 12 here. And then just do some final cleanup here, just some formatting to get our items all aligned. I'll just do these guys. There we go. There we go. All right, and there we have it. Um, can definitely do some some final touches with with just some formatting and, and, and cleanup and things like that. So, um, you know, maybe double checking your your formatting on your fields here. So measures, I want that prior year sales to be in that uh, that currency to no decimals.
go. It's got a little nicked here. There we go. All right. And there we have it.